the story of the Baku Tbilisi Jehan pipeline has been told. Crossing three countries, almost 10 years in preparation, and nearly three years in construction. But what about the people who brought this story to the world? Behind the scenes, a team of journalists, cameramen and video specialists from many different regions pulled their skills. The team was led by Mehmet Binay, a former television journalist who specialized in energy issues. Back in 2002, when the project, the construction, was commenced, I announced as a journalist uh, in my own program that a dream became a reality. Um, I, back then, I didn't really have a clue that real work was just starting then. His first job was to form a team whose collective vision went beyond the pipeline. They also had to tease out the stories of people, history, and the natural environment. Getting to new and usually remote locations with camera crews took a lot of preparation and planning. And a major part, a major subject for me to cover is also traveling. Uh, I myself find traveling exciting. I love traveling. The team were to spend a thousand days out and about on project sites. To get around, they would drive over a hundred thousand kilometers and log more than 400 flights between them. They learned to travel light. I remember many things, of course. Uh, I remember uh, long hours of driving, uh, which is sometimes really boring. Firstly, we have uh, to travel a lot. In this project, I have found lots of opportunities to travel. No matter how good you plan your trip, there's always a lot of unexpected. They also had to be prepared for extreme weather conditions. First of all, I think mud. And our job is, of course, out of the roads in the mountains, in the, in the fields. So wherever you got, you have tons of mud on, of mud on, your, on your shoes. You can hardly walk. I remember cold. I remember heat. I and it was about 45 degrees. Uh, so it was very difficult. I, was, I thought that I will die. Çetin, hava durumu veyahut tabiat durumu şeraitinde en çetin çekilişler hem işe en önemli olan ve en güzel olan. Well, everything was there. We had set up the team. We had three um, filming units in each country. But still, I needed a consistent visual story, consistent visual identity. That was a big challenge. Everybody brings a touch of its own style into a project. For example, we have a cameraman in uh, Azerbaijan, Kenan, who has a cinema background. So his style was more like uh, long shots, uh, long panoramic moves. Kenan's experience in filming the Caspian oil field stretched back to Soviet times. He graduated from the Institute of Cinematography in Moscow and worked as chief cameraman in Azerbaijan, shooting several films over 30 years. Uh, on the other hand, we have Gela in Georgia, who is kind of news cameraman, but with really great sense for creating compositions and creating uh, successful video stories. In Turkey, we had Soner, who had experience mostly in long-term television jobs. So all of them actually brought something into a project. I'm going to 
Achuno is a rogo chain ginda ro da ina ko tu lama zia lama zia chuno tu tu dia tu dia chuno da bro sashole baga kamis thore beu sarak magi sashole be chamo ides na khos ma shen khoga magi sashole be ro da na khob pro lama da sheni kwe kana sheni samsho bolo isad gile be rat khshirat shen sarak na na khe da ta pirola chen na khe. Turkey da hamju da gezmishti mama bu borat dolayi sile gezdim zaman çok değişik farklı insanlarla tanıştık. Çok farklı insanlarla röportajlar yaptık. Çok farklı anlatımlar, bazen çok abartılı anlatımlar, bazen çok komik denebilecek olaylar da yaşadık. Getting that fresh new angle, that interesting point of view took creativity. It also meant towing the line with all the on-site safety regulations. Sovetler Birliği zamanı e, tehlikesizlik meselesine formal yanaşadılar yani. Düzdü, kaydalar var idi, kaydalar tertip olunurdu, yazılırdı. Ama o kaydalara iş zamanı riayet eləməzlər. Büyünlerin bu işlere çok büyük fikir verilir ve Sovetler vaxtında bu bir formal karakter taşıyırsa, indi bu saat bu en önemli bir meseledir, en önemli bir problemdir. The team had to go through extensive safety trainings, which covered every eventuality. The gear wasn't high fashion, and nobody looked good. We need to go offshore. It was difficult to believe that we could drive only 70 kilometers per hour on national uh, highways. But at the end, um, looking back at, um, on two and a half years, um, I appreciate now all these safety rules because we're all alive. Getting to grips with the technicalities of the project meant sharp learning curves for the whole team whether they were out reporting, shooting, script writing or editing. Yes, can you, can you explain me on the screen? Yeah, sure. This is a pilot's diagnostic screen, mm -hmm. which tells There were a lot of terms who were really strange for me, a lot of abbreviations of the project itself. But from time to time, after knowing uh, the engineers, interviewing them, reading a lot of stuff about the issue, um, I started to understand really what's going on. Showing this information to audiences whose knowledge ranged from expert to layman was not an easy task. <laughs> Especially explaining operations on the vast offshore platform. Actually, the first moment when I saw these giant structures, I was really excited and I said, I mean, what am I going to do with these huge things? How am I going to cover them? Uh, because uh, actually, to, um, to see any change in the construction or uh, during an, any transportation of these uh, top sides or jackets, you cannot really clearly see any, any movement, so it wasn't very easy uh, to cover all of this and to bring it in a, in a, in a way that uh, people who will watch it to understand what is going on. <laughs> but did it ever become boring? I don't think that uh, it was boring because every time uh, it was something different. Different people, different faces, different stories, so it wasn't boring at all. Well, technically, the stories had to be very precise, but still appealing to everyone. Uh, that was a big challenge, because some of the technical um, stories are only interesting for engineers. So we had to add um, a little bit of a human touch to stories. Covering the communities affected by the projects added depth and created interesting moments for the reporters. They don't see me as a reporter only, because they see me as someone uh, who can solve their problems. Because I'm coming from somewhere else, 
from a different world and they they sometimes think I have power to change their lives. I talked a lot with ordinary people, with poor people, just people who had a lot of problems and whenever they saw reporters and the cameramen they were doing their best to um, to speak about their problems, not only concerning BP and the pipeline, but concerning everything. Communicating with different people, cultures and languages, this was central to the project. The team was fluent in Azeri, Georgian, Turkish, English, Russian and other languages. The magic in working with different languages is that you are flexible uh, with languages, that you are ready to uh, learn new languages, even if it's uh, only a few words. Uh, if you say, um, thank you very much, um, in different languages it can solve many problems. Most people, even Caspian energy experts, didn't know what the landscapes and villages in the regions actually looked like. The videos were good tools to communicate these stories and to show everyone in the world the reality of BTC. Pulling the visuals together and making the story work was the preserve of Yasmin Gouchot, former news program director. I'm trying to find the things that are confusing, amazing, different. And uh, once back in the office, once uh, when editing the story, I'm just uh, picking up all those uh, different and, and uh, uncommon details, uh, trying to compose them into, into uh, one story. Because uh, you have to give a feeling to the audience that they are discovering something as well, that they are a witness to something that is not so common, you know, so it, uh, it always works. The team came from news backgrounds and were used to the support of large departments, but here they had to be much more self-sufficient. Creating an archive for more than 500 hours of footage posed special problems. I came up with an idea uh, which was digitizing the tapes, the whole tape, into an offline format and putting it as server. So this lets us people to reach it over internet and watch it over and over again without touching a tape on the shelf. Despite the amount of material on hand, Sometimes a special overview was needed to clarify things for the audience. I think that at times filming was not enough to tell the story. Um, sometimes you don't really have an elevation, so you're not able to show the whole operation. Then uh, you need to go back to the um, editing studio, talk to your um, colleagues and come up with different solutions. And uh, at this point, maps um, animations or special graphics were really useful to tell the story. So, uh, you know, a lot of problems this morning. Which the Hasan Kali well. River crossing you know, in northeastern side, Turkey well, was a case in point. Right now everyone's wandering around. The area was a large and flat plain, and the team had difficulties so, uh, in illustrating the overall picture. Big effort to, uh, to make this we day, decided uh, to use a very high resolution global satellite image, which will be composited under the real image of Hasan Kale. We started to create this huge satellite image from bits and pieces that we have in our stock. And then we got the actual Hasan Kale River footage, which is taken by a satellite. And we started to match these images together. The team also had to meet deadlines throughout the two and a half year lifespan of the project. This meant long hours in the office. They produced 20 programs about offshore and pipeline construction. More than 11,000 copies were distributed worldwide. Sometimes you have to finish 
the final product, the final video, very next morning. So this means every member of team needs to stay at the office during the night time. So whenever we face a situation like this, immediately we order pizzas and lots of coffee to finish that work in time. Music did more than keep the team awake. It was an important texture in all the videos. Mert and Ozan composed a soundtrack with a global appeal at Jingle Mingle, their studio in Istanbul. We had the tracks, we had the music composed by Mert tonight. Uh, but I think I felt like something was missing, a human touch was missing. Then we decided to uh, use vocals, um, not really words. Um, because words will be in a specific language which we wanted to avoid. So we decided to go for um, voice and um, Özge really um, gave it the final touch. It was the first time a pipeline had been covered in such detail. For 34 months, the team had worked exclusively on the project. Their story showed the close connections between engineering, people and the environment. And finally, the first oil flowed through the pipeline and the team moved on, leaving behind them a remarkable visual record.